Lord, I just thank you for this moment. I thank you for this time to be in this space with you, to speak your word, to speak your truth, Lord God. I pray that you would just use me. I surrender everything to you. Have your way. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Many of you don't know that much about me, but those of you who do know me know I'm an avid movie goer. I mean, I'm serious with that thing. I, I got this bucket that I get every year, and I get this cup faithfully every year. I get to refill that thing every single year. I wait in December for the previous, you know, for the next year's cup so that I can be ready when I go to the movie. So I have my bucket, I have my cup, and I have my blanket. I get in the little reclining seat, I roll it back, and I do my thing. I relax, sometimes I might even go to sleep. But that's my time, that's my time, I think, just to unwind and relax. So I went to this movie last year, and I think it's one of the best suspense movies. Okay, y'all, um, it's a suspense, it's a horror movie, okay? I don't normally do that stuff but somebody talked me into going to see this movie. So I went to see this movie and it's called A Quiet Place. Did anybody see that movie? A Qu it was off the chain, right? Okay, so in A Quiet Place, it introduces us to a family who must live their lives in silence in order to survive. The creatures in this film were hunters of sound. This disturbing movie had me jumping all over the place. As a matter of fact, I made my mom watch it with me again the other night. The mother in this movie, played by actress Emily Blunt, was pregnant with her fourth child. As I watched the family tiptoe around, play games silently, eat silently, they even used lettuce for plates. They shopped and communicated in silence. I wondered, because she was pregnant, how she was gonna have that baby in silence. If any of you had personal experience with ch childbirth, you know when those pains, when those contractions hit, you holler, right? You will experience pain in childbirth. There was a moment in the movie when Evelyn stepped down onto a stair and there was a nail sticking up out of that step. When she landed, her mouth just went wide open, but she didn't emit any sound. She was screaming in silence. But if Evelyn would have screamed, how many of you know she would have lost her life? It would have cost her everything. Like Evelyn, many of us are in pain and we scream in silence. Life has stolen so much from us that we've lost our voices. People have said we're not light enough or dark enough, so we lose our voice. We're told that we're too young or too old, so we lose our voice. Our hair is too kinky or it's too straight, and we lose our voice. We don't have the right degree or pedigree, so we lose our voice. Some of us were taught to hold it in, whatever it is. Like Evelyn, we die inside. If we see something wrong, we might not say it. Some of us choose to even keep silent because it does not benefit us or our families or anything we got going on. Some of us simply believe that no one will listen to us, no one will hear us, so why even say anything at all? Many of us have, been, have given our voices away to people who have claimed to have loved us, but yet they abused us. We've lost our voices to religion that says we must remain silent. As women, we've learned that we have to constantly fight for our voices to be heard, and then constantly fight to keep them. As I was preparing for this message, in the wee hours of the morning, I wake up, y'all, it's some god-awful times, but I wake up in the, in the early in the morning, and on March 6th, something came across my little news feed. I met Senator Stephanie Flowers of Arkansas. I urge you, if you have not seen this clip, that you go online and see the full six minutes. 
For the sake of time, this is just what, a glimpse of what I saw. Talking about my son's life. And I'm talking about the lives of other black kids. Uh, I would move that we limit debate to 10 minutes aside, excluding questions. Quickly. Yeah, I'll be as quick as I can, as quick as it takes to kill somebody, I guess. You want me to be that quick. But, you know, as uh, Ms. Fletcher pointed out, and it doesn't take much to look on the local news every night and see how many black kids, black boys, black men are being killed with these stand your ground defenses that these people raise, then they get off. So I take issue with that. I'm the only person here of color, okay? I am a mother too. And I have a son. And I care as much for my son as y'all care for y'all's. But my son doesn't walk the same path as yours does. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. What are you going to do? Shoot me? Senator. Senator. I'm telling you, this deserves more attention. I am upset. You need to be upset somewhere else. No, I don't. I, can, I got a right. I'm an elected officer just like you. But you are not going to silence me. Hmm, wow. What I love about this clip that was not shown was prior to Senator Flowers walking out, she said to her peer, you can't silence me. A bold proclamation from a sister who is driven by a cause to save lives. Maybe to you she was a bit too much, a little too emotional, a little too loud, but how many of you know that sometimes we gotta make some noise? So I ask you today, how will you ever win if you never make a sound? How will you ever make an impact if you don't use your voice, if you don't make some noise? Step into the pages of the word of God with me. We'll be joining Moses, the Israelites, and five sisters in the wilderness. Turn with me if you can, or it'll be up on the screen, to Numbers 27, 1 through 11. The daughters of Zelophehad, who was the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, belonged to the clans of Manasseh, son of Joseph. The names of his daughters were Mala, Noah, Hagla, Milcah, and Tirzah. They came forward and stood before Moses, Eleazar the priest, the leaders, and the whole assembly at the entrance to the tent of meeting and said, our father died in the, in the wilderness. He was not among Korah's followers who banded together against the Lord, but he died for his sin and left no sons. Why should our father's name disappear from his clan? Because he had no son. Give us property among our father's relatives. So Moses brought their case before the Lord, and the Lord said to him, what Zelophehad's daughters are saying is right. You must certainly give them property as an inheritance among their father's relatives and give their father's inheritance to them. Say to the Israelites, this is God talking, y'all. If a man dies and leaves no son, give his inheritance to his daughter. If he has no daughter, give his inheritance to his brothers. If he has no brothers, give his inheritance to his father's brothers. If the father has no brothers, give his inheritance to the nearest relative in his clan that he may possess it. This is to have the force of the law for the Israelites as the Lord God commanded Moses. God changed the law because of these five sisters. If I were to add a tag to this text, as they say, or give it a title, I would title it, Make Some Noise. You don't have the right to remain silent. 
so there's a way that, that God has uh, shown me how to study his word for me to understand it. So I just like to share it with everybody. It's know it, own it, work it. That's my system. Know it, own it, work it. Come on. Know it, own it, work it. One more time. Know it, own it, work it. Okay, so what God wants us to do when we approach his word is he wants us to know something. It's something that he wants us to know about it. He wants us to own something, something that we bury in our hearts, that we keep with us. And then there's something that he wants us to work. It's application. It's what he wants us to do. Okay? So the first point that he gave me was, you have to reclaim your voice. That's Numbers 27, 1 through 2. Through two, they came forward and stood before Moses, Eleazar the priest, the leaders, and the whole assembly at the entrance of the tent of meeting. They came forward and stood. Experience and loss has a way of stopping us in our tracks, right? These sisters have been traveling. Okay, they're in a wilderness, y'all. Y'all know anything about the wilderness? You know, 40 years, they're in the desert, they're moving around, but God is with them, but they're still in the wilderness, right? They were probably born and raised there. They should have a wilderness mindset, a victim mentality. They were tired. Their hair was jacked up. Their clothes was messed up. They couldn't get a pedicure or a manicure. They were worn out. Their father died. Nothing was said about their mother. And on top of everything else, they ain't had no man. Okay. Ratchet. (laughs) They were worn out. In that society, women were considered second-class citizens. When the odds are stacked against you, what do you do? Many of us just buckle at our knees, right? We stop living. But what these sisters did was they came forward and they stood. They didn't make excuses. They didn't make excuses about their situation, that they didn't have any, a man. They didn't make excuses. Instead, they took the time in the wilderness to devise a game plan, to strategize. They looked at the facts. I can only imagine the meeting that they were having in the wilderness, you know, these five sisters. So let's kind of peek in on their discussion. All right, y'all, we're about to go to the promised land. They're counting all these men in the census. Yeah, they're about to divide up that land. Well, well, what about us? We're about to be homeless. If we don't have that land, how will we eat? How will we make a living? This ain't ain't right. There's something not right about this situation. This law does not help women. Daddy didn't leave us a life insurance policy or will. We got to do something about that. Okay, so let's look at this. Let's look at our situation. Our father did teach us about God. He told us that he was faithful and just. If our father believed him, why shouldn't we? Girl, yeah, you're right, you're right. So Moses, right, he's the leader, right, y'all? Yeah, he's, he's the leader. Perhaps we should go aside, outside of the camp and go to the tent. The tent? Yeah, the tent of meeting. You see, that's the place where everyone was able to go to seek the Lord, including women. Girl, are you you sure you sure about that? Yeah, see, Moses pitches that tent out there. If we if we go over there, I know it's a long way and and my feet hurt a little bit, but but we can make this, y'all. We can we can do this. Are you saying in this patriarchal society that we're going to go and stand before Moses, Eleazar, the priest, the whole congregation? Y'all, this was a congregation of men. And they were like, yeah, sis, Psalm 118 and 6 says the Lord is on our side. We will not fear. What can man do to us? That's right, girl, we got to go do what we got to do. We have to believe that Moses is a man of God and that he will take our situation to him. 
Anyone can seek the Lord there. What do you think, Noah? Hagla, Milka, Tirza, are you in? Girl, yes. <laughs> okay, so what do you think we should do when we get there? Let's just go there and stand. When you've done all you can do, just Hebrews 4 and 16 said, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace. Other translation says, let's go boldly before the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. What do we learn from these sisters? We have to step outside of the camp, get out of that little pity party, get out of our comfort zones, make a move and strategize. So what's your next move? What situation is God calling you out of? He's waiting for you to trust him. Trust him enough to come forward and stand. That's it. Be still and know that I am your God. Some of you lost your voices in traumatic experiences. You lost your voice when a loved one died. People have silenced you. Society has silenced you. Some of us have even silenced ourselves due to guilt from our painful pasts. Who shushed you? Don't allow them to continue to have power over your life. In order to reclaim your voice, you have to sometimes let your fears fuel your faith. So what are you afraid of? What has the wilderness taught you? What I've discovered is that in the wilderness, we can find our purpose. It's in the wilderness where we can discover who God is. It is in the wilderness where some of us have lost our voices. But what God wants us to know, it's also in the wilderness that we can reclaim our voice. So know it. You have to reclaim your voice, strategize, and make a, make a move, even if it's just to come forward and stand. Yeah. Own it. Own it. You have something to say. So you got to reclaim your voice, right? Know it. You have to own it. You have something to say. Numbers 27, 3 and 4 says, Our father died in the wilderness. He was not among Korah's followers who banded together against the Lord, but he died for his own sin and left no son. Why should our father's name disappear from this clan because he had no son? You see, what you're witnessing here, if you don't already know it, is the first female legal team. <laughs> Do, do y'all see what's going here? Uh, they were sisters. This was their first case. They needed to get their inheritance. Amen. During the discovery process, they pulled together the facts. The law wasn't right. We ain't gonna, we're going to have to fight this thing. We have a case. And we're going to take our case to the Lord. We think we can win this thing. We're going to lead with the facts that our father died, and we're gonna tell them he was on the Lord's side. They knew who they were getting in front of. What they also knew was that the Lord had a heart for widows and orphans. See, that almost made me shout. Y'all understand what's going on in this. I mean, these women were oppressed. They were oppressed. And they were in this situation, and they couldn't figure out how to get out of this thing. But they knew their God, and they knew the law. They knew that they had rights as orphans and widows. They knew that orphans and widows had rights. In Exodus 22, 22 to 3, blah, blah, 22, 22 through 23, you shall not mistreat any widow or fatherless child, if you do mistreat them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. Yeah. Psalm 82 and 3 said, give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and destitute. They knew the law. They knew their rights. These were some savvy sisters, y'all. They studied the law while in the wilderness. They studied the law while in the wilderness. They didn't feel sorry for themselves. 
They didn't binge on Ben and Jerry or Sweet Potato <laughs> Thing, Jada. They didn't post all of their problems on Facebook or Instagram. Instead, they studied God's law and built a solid case. They did their homework before they even opened their mouths to speak. They used their inside voices. And what's their inside voices? The Holy Spirit. Because, see, the Holy Spirit teaches us in all things. He tells us which way we should go. He guides and he directs us, even in the wilderness. We don't take into account how powerful our words are. They either tear down or they build up. They didn't use a bunch of words, like most of us women do. They stuck to the facts of their case. We are orphans, and our father had no sons. So what's your case? Do you know that God has given you something to say? He knows about your wilderness experiences. Don't be ashamed of them. God just might be setting you up for victory. Allow him to heal your heart so that you can hear from him. Let him put his words in your mouth. Joshua 1 and 8 says, The book of the law must not depart from your mouth. You are to recite it day and night so that you may be careful to observe everything written in it. For then you will prosper and succeed in all that you do. So know it. You got to reclaim your voice. Own it. You have something to say. Work it, ladies. But in own it, you have something to say. And lastly, you work it. You got to make some noise. Numbers 27 and 4 says that the lady said, give us our property among our father's relatives. How do you think they said that thing? I think they said it boldly. I think they said, give us what's due us. I know they were savvy and sophisticated, even in the wilderness. I know they may have been kind of docile, they've been under attack, but I think they stood up and they said, demanded, Give us our property among our father's relatives. They had to make some noise. There comes a time in a case when our sisters used one sentence in their closing argument. They stood on the promise that God was for the Israelites, ownership in the land of milk and honey. They stood on the promise that God will hear an orphan's cry. They stood on the promise that they would have success if they meditated on God's word day and night. So they made some noise. They challenged the Mosaic law, the law of the land, the law of the Lord. They came and they stood and they reclaimed their voice. They gathered their words and made some noise. Give us our property among our father's relatives. Give us our inheritance. I can only guess what the crowd was saying. They were a little bit rowdy. All these men are saying, give them property. Women don't own no property. They don't know how to till the land. They don't know what they doing. They don't deserve that. Give that to a man. They're standing up and they're going on and they're saying they're supposed to be submissive to us. That land should go to a man. They don't know how to take care of that. They don't even know how to cut grass. I can just see those sisters fighting through the noise to make their own noise. Those sisters shut it down. And after they made their closing argument, Moses couldn't do nothing but go to God. Verse 5 says, so Moses brought their case before the Lord, and the Lord said to him, what Zelophehad's daughters are saying is right. God said they are right. They had a voice way back then. You must certainly give them the property as an inheritance. You must certainly give them the property. The words they, they used changed the law. They didn't allow anyone to take their voice. They didn't allow anyone to silence them. They were just five orphan girls who grew up in the wilderness. They challenged a system that said, you don't matter. You don't really have a voice. You're insignificant because you don't have a family. You don't have a man. You're not worthy. You cannot possess the land. You're not even counted. They, didn't, they did something unheard of. They did something crazy. 
they went after their inheritance. They pursued the promise and won. Is God calling you to make some noise, to do something crazy? Nike had us had a, a commercial that I really loved, and I want to share that with you, and I hope it empowers you too. If we show emotion, we're called dramatic. If we want to play against men, we're nuts. And if we dream of equal opportunity, delusional. When we stand for something, we're unhinged. It's super, it's gonna need to calm down. When we're too good, there's something wrong with us. And if we get angry, we're hysterical, irrational, or just being crazy. But a woman running a marathon was crazy. Officials tried to pull her off the course. A woman boxing was crazy. A woman dunking, crazy. Coaching an NBA team, crazy. A woman competing in a hit job, changing her sport, landing a double cork 1080, or winning 23 grand slams, having a baby, and then coming back for more. Crazy, 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 and crazy. So if they want to call you crazy, fine. Show them what crazy can do. Ladies, we have to be like our five sisters and do something crazy. We didn't go through the wilderness to remain silent. The DNA of a follower of Jesus is to make some noise. We don't have the right to remain silent. God's been too good to us. We have to know that God has given us a voice, and if we lost it somewhere, it's time to reclaim it. We have to own the fact that we have something to say, and we have to work at it by saying it, speak our truth. That is what equates to our healing and our victory. Maybe your painful past has still got you caught up in the wilderness. You are saying, Tanya, I don't, I don't, don't understand what I've been through. You don't understand what I've been through. But God does. God knows. He knows about your wilderness experience. He knows that you've been through some things, but he can heal you. You think that he doesn't understand your tears, but he sees them. He wipes them every single day you cry. He wants to help you. He wants to reach out to you. He wants to rescue you. He wants to restore you. I want to give you all an opportunity because, see, here's the thing. When we lose our voice, it's so hard for us to get it back as women. Like these five sisters, they, they got together and they supported each other. And I don't know what any of you are going through right now, but I know that God wants to help you come out of that wilderness situation. These sisters, they strategized, they stood up, they talked to the Lord, they gave him all his, their problems, and he was there with them just like he is with you. So I want to ask you, if you're going through something, a wilderness experience right now, I just want you to come down to the altar. You're struggling and you're stressing out and, and you're still in this experience and you don't know how God is going to bring you out of it. Join your sisters at the altar. Come down and support somebody because God has something for you. He has healing. He has deliverance. He has every single thing that you need. It's at this altar that you'll get to reclaim your voice.